Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Pallidotomy Introduction Parkinson's disease affects millions of people. The realization that many Parkinson's patients continue to be disabled despite the best available medical therapy has prompted a search for alternative treatment strategies. Parkinson's disease is also known as PD. Medications are the main treatment for Parkinson's disease. A surgery known as a pallidotomy may be necessary in some cases to help control some of the symptoms of PD. This program explains pallidotomy. It talks about the symptoms and causes of Parkinson's disease. It also explains the risks and complications of pallidotomy. Anatomy The brain controls all body functions, from speech to movement and thinking. It is located in and protected by the skull. MRIs, or magnetic resonance imaging scans, and CT scans, or computed axial tomography, are used by healthcare providers to look at the brain. This is an MRI of a normal brain. Symptoms and their causes. This is what the brain looks like if you cut it from top to bottom. Parkinson's disease, or PD, is a degenerative disease of the brain. A group of cells deep in the brain in an area known as substantia nigra die off. These cells produce a very important substance called dopamine. Dopamine is necessary to help the brain control body and face movements. With no dopamine, another area of the brain known as the globus pallidus becomes overactive. The overactivity of the globus pallidus leads to some of the symptoms seen in PD. Some of the symptoms of Parkinson's disease are increased stiffness, slowing of movements, and tremors. Other symptoms of PD include inability to move or freezing, excessive sweating, drooling, difficulty swallowing, slurred speech, abnormal movements or dyskinesias, these dyskinesias are generally attributed to the medications. Some people may also develop dementia, a progressive worsening of the memory. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Treatments PD is usually treated with medications. Many oral medications, such as levodopa, have been developed to help control the symptoms of PD. If the medication is not successful in controlling the symptoms, pallidotomy surgery may be considered. The following symptoms can be helped by pallidotomy. Rigidity and abnormal movements known as dyskinesia. Freezing and falling. Tremors. Other symptoms, such as slurred speech, are not helped by pallidotomy. Good candidates for pallidotomy surgery are people who are younger than 70 years of age and are otherwise healthy. People with dementia are not good candidates. The aim of the operation is to destroy or injure a part of the globus pallidus so that it will no longer be as overactive. This operation is called a pallidotomy. The left side of the brain controls the right side of the body and vice versa. If you have severe symptoms in the right arm, you may benefit from a pallidotomy in the left part of the brain. If a pallidotomy is needed for both sides of the brain, the operation is performed at different times. This is called bilateral pallidotomy. The first pallidotomy is done to help the side with the worst symptoms. Many people may be better candidates for another operation known as deep brain stimulation. In this operation, Specific areas of the brain may be stimulated with an electric current. Your healthcare provider will help decide which operation is best for you.
pallidotomy procedure. This operation is usually done under local anesthesia. This numbs the scalp like the anesthesia that the dentist uses to numb the teeth. The pallidotomy is done using a special method known as stereotaxy. Stereotactic means accurate localization of the abnormality or target in space, much like we identify cities on Earth using longitude and latitude measurements. To determine the exact location of the globus pallidus, your head will be set in a device that looks like a bird's cage. This is known as a stereotactic frame. The frame is fixed to the skull with four pins. These are anchored to the skull through the skin under local anesthesia. There may be some initial discomfort after the frame is fixed, but this improves quickly. An MRI scan is then done. Data from that scan is then entered into a computer to help determine the exact location of the globus pallidus. The patient is then taken to the operating room, where the hair on a small area of the head is clipped. A small incision is then performed under local anesthesia. A hole in the skull is drilled and a special needle called an electrode moves to the globus pallidus using the data taken from the computer. This is a very precise operation. Microelectrode recording from the brain will then be performed to find a precise location of the globus pallidus. The brain is stimulated with low-level currents. This helps determine that the electrode is not close to important brain structures that control movement or vision. At this time, you may experience twitching of the face, arm, and leg, or may even see flashes of light. The needle may need to be moved a few times before the surgeon finds the best location to operate. Once the target area is reached, a special electric current generator is used to burn a few small areas in the globus pallidus. This is done by raising the temperature of the tip of the electrode for a specific amount of time. There is no pain or discomfort during the lesion process. Some people's symptoms improve dramatically while still in the operating room. During the operation, the surgeon will ask you to answer questions and move your arms and legs to monitor your neurological functions. Once the surgeon is satisfied with the results, the stereotactic frame is taken off and you are taken to the recovery room. Risks and Complications The surgery is safe, but there are several possible risks and complications. These are unlikely but possible. You need to know about them just in case they happen. By being informed, you may be able to help your healthcare provider detect complications early. The risks and complications include those related to anesthesia and those related to any type of surgery. Risks related to local anesthesia include possible allergic reactions to the anesthesia used. These risks will be discussed with you in greater detail by your anesthesiologist or nurse anesthetist. Some of the risks are seen in any type of surgery. These include 1. Infection, deep or at the skin level. Deep infections may involve the brain or the fluid that circulates around the spinal cord and brain. This is known as an abscess or meningitis. Treating deep infections may require long-term antibiotics and possibly surgery. 2. Bleeding, either during or after the operation. This may necessitate a blood transfusion and another operation to take the blood clot out. 3. Skin scars. Other risks and complications are related specifically to this procedure. These are rare, but it is important to know about them. Strokes and bleeding inside the brain could lead to paralysis and death. This is rare. Another operation may be needed to remove blood clots that can happen after the operation. Speech problems can occur with pallidotomy done on the dominant side of the brain. The dominant hemisphere is where the language center is located. These are not frequent. Partial blindness can also happen. The operation may not help the symptoms and may even make them worse and cause weakness on the opposite side of the body. Some people may also undergo the operation on the opposite side at a later date. When this is done, 
there is a risk of speech problems developing that may not improve with time. To reduce this risk, the two operations are done at different times. The size of the lesion on the opposite side is also kept smaller. After the surgery, you may spend a day or two in the hospital for close observation. Your healthcare provider will discuss this with you in more detail. After the operation, you will resume the oral medications. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary Parkinson's disease, or PD, is a degenerative disease of the brain. Some of the symptoms of Parkinson's disease are increased stiffness, slowing of movements, and tremors. PD is usually treated with medications. Many oral medications, such as levodopa, have been developed to help control the symptoms of PD. If the medication is not successful in controlling the symptoms, pallidotomy surgery may be considered. Pallidotomies are usually successful in reducing some but not all the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. The following symptoms can be helped by pallidotomy. Rigidity and abnormal movements, known as dyskinesia. Freezing and falling. Tremors. This operation is safe. Risks and complications are not frequent. Knowing about them may help you detect and treat them early. Thank you for using Explain.